stay within uh, the realm of the um, exhibition and the ar architecture on display with uh, uh, Giovanna Borassi. Giovanna is uh, uh, an architect, writer, editor, and curator. She was an editor and writer at Lotus International and Lotus Navigator. And for the last five years, she's been working at the uh, CCA in Montreal, where uh, she has developed several research projects. And her work has primarily focused on how environmental and social issues are influencing today's urbanism and architecture. One of the recent exhibitions that Giovanna has worked on uh, is Environment, Approaches for Tomorrow, Some Ideas on Living in Lodio, Lo London and Tokyo, Actions, What You Can Do with the City, and the most recent one is How Traveling, Fruit, Ideas and Buildings Rearrange Our Environment. And in the last project, which I think Giovanna will uh, uh, expand on in her talk, uh, she examines how migration transforms the physical environment. So please welcome uh, Giovanna Boras. <coughs> So thanks, uh, Marina, for uh, inviting me and organizing this interesting event, and thanks everybody for being here. Um, I think that we are all, we all noticing that uh, and witnessing a kind of like spreading of different ways of and approaches of writing about architecture, using and uh, criticism today. I think uh, there are many reasons that we could actually uh, bring uh, for uh, this uh, kind of like phenomenon that is uh, coming back really like about writing. And I think it uh, for sure is the multiplication of the platforms that are out now available uh, for writing and thinking about architecture. So I'm obviously thinking about all the online um, possibility. Uh, but also more kind of like traditional ones like books, magazines, and exhibitions also as a way of actually use the words or writing and use a kind of like a narrative idea to establish um, and convey a content. Um, I think that uh, uh, this uh, kind of like diffusion of different kind of platforms, it gives also the idea, it's kind of like liberating different voices. So as Mario was uh, saying this morning, we start to see you know, a kind of like different way of writing a Wikipedia entry, a blog, or it's kind of like it's starting to come up uh, many different voices. And I'm not referring only in the architectural um, field, but sometimes um, we are witnessing now, for example, I don't know if you are uh, uh, familiar with, uh, it's a Canadian group of uh, Arcade Fire recently did a, a CD compilation that actually is a very interesting text about suburbia and all the music actually deals with the idea of suburbia in North America. So I think there are, is, is actually an exciting moment because there are all these different kind of like writing and way of writing. And um, I would say that all the, the idea of using all these different instruments um, have maybe the, a greater, a greater um, capacity to describe and capture our contem contemporary and, uh, and complex society. It's also a way of discovering new territories and maybe touching things and that we will not uh, normally look in, a, in the discipline of architecture. Um, so the, the other things that I think is interesting is that uh, it's also bringing the, uh, different kind of containers. So we start to see um, much more like anthologies, readers, collection of stories, archive of, of records, 
dispatches, compilations. So also the idea of container of like where this writing it goes together um, is much larger and gives a more varied panorama and maybe different kind of a perspective. I also think that it's not only an issue of like where the piece of writing is appearing. So it, you know the where which which is the <coughs> medium that is actually containing the writing. Uh, is also interesting to observe the character that uh, these piece, this different writing pieces have. So as uh, this morning uh, we was, uh, someone was uh, mentioning is a idea of, of, of style or an aesthetic or, or but is also maybe it was uh, Jane re referring to this is also the idea of applying a, a structure that is borrowed from another discipline into and using it to write with a certain frame. So it's interesting because there are, there is, a, it seems to me that there is a lot of like borrowing from other discipline, um, like storytelling, fiction, novel, uh, short stories, journalism, uh, tourist guides, or a, a kind of like different way of, of writing and uh, is bringing this into a more like discipline, uh, the architectural discipline. And this obviously changed the character of the writing, might have a more like enter entertaining character. It <coughs> brings the idea of like atmosphere or subjectivity in the, in, in the writing itself. Um, I would like to uh, show you some uh, um, of the experiment that we did at the CCA as uh, a way of actually putting in practice all this uh, possibility of using the, the words and the writing. And uh, um, CCA has a, an editorial recent past. Let's say these are all the CCA books published in the 30 years that CCA exists. And as you see from the, this photo is actually very different. And uh, was one of the things that we realized when we piled them up is actually how we define a kind of like editorial strategy with, within in this variety. <coughs> and I think it's interesting that there is this uh, variety as a kind of like different voices and different periods also of, of even if of a very young institution of 30 years old. Um, at the CCA we tend to consider an exhibition and a book as sort of like a research project. So um, we don't want to only to research on the on the content that or, or the topic that we are interested in, but we also want to evolve and think and, and, and find um, the right way to communicate that content. And so there is always like a lot of energy and thoughts on which is the character that that project has to have in order to deliver the, the content that we, we want to, the reader or the visitor of the show uh, to, to take. So this is why somehow you see this variety because each project has a very specific answer and a very specific way the, the, and uh, gets its own specific character. And um, the idea is, oh sorry, the idea is that uh, um, the way we use uh, you know, the, the words and the writing has, is also a way of constructing, constructing the, the thesis that we want to to put on. Um, I have to say that all our projects deals really with the idea of putting together the images in the text and trying to understand how these two things uh, could work together and how th the reader could actually uh, understand fully the content in this kind of like um, uh, yeah, relationship. Um, so I decided to call this um, talk a sort of like a appropriating a narrative yeah. toolkit because I think what we <coughs> tried to do was to start with some basic um, uh, thinking and the first one is the idea of giving a title or giving the right caption to an image. We did recently this project that was called Action, What You Can Do With The City. And this project was an exhibition and a book and was dealing with the idea of challenging the traditional urban planning and introducing new tools and new ways of 
thinking about how we draw and plan and how we use our city. And so the main issue was um, we had 99 <coughs> action, and the main issue was like, was like how we uh, in, attach an image like this one with a descriptive short title uh, that will actually um, make the, the reader and the visitor really understanding that we are trying to put you in a new situation. So what we did was to invent this kind of like very silly and some, sometimes ironic title uh, where you see that the actor behind is not anymore a planner but in this case is Fomi Velour Suite Challenge Authority. Um, this is about a project in, in LA and is about taking um, uh, whatever the plants are in the public space and taking the, the fruits as a as because they are in the public space that could be used, so is it the orange lead na natural walk and so on. So the idea was to change the, the way uh, you will give a title to a project in order to convey the idea that the tools will be different and the way you will relate to this project, this project has to be different somehow. Um, so these are some of these action. And then in the um, in the exhibition somehow, uh, sorry, the image is not good. Uh, this, they took the form of sort of like heading of a newspaper. So it was also thinking of like how, which is the way you will want to communicate something that is, has to be um, understood as kind of like an active uh, um, and kind of like a, pro a statement. So, so we decided that this title will work as some of sort of like newspaper headings. Um, another project we worked on was uh, <coughs> interesting to understand of um, obviously was about you know the, the uh, uh, 1973 oil crisis and has all uh, 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 important was an important project because was actually showing has uh, 35 years ago uh, we were already thinking of a future with uh, solar wind, uh, recycling, and everything, and was an amazing research to, to work on. Uh, but at the same time, we wanted to, to think of like how we could, and in, do, in, doing the, in doing the research, we realized that there were a lot of already like uh, board games or toys, or there was a lot already on the crisis that was actually more, um, was not only on the newspaper, was for a very large public. So we decided that in the, in the book, we will actually convey the idea of like an illustrated novel that will actually explain this uh, oil crisis to, <coughs> to a kind of like larger public. And uh, so we commissioned an illustrator to actually do and tell all the story in this kind of like illustrated novel. And so it was a way of addressing a completely different public uh, within, so also, a, inventing a kind of like a different idea of writing also in using this kind of like novel. Um, the other, uh, another project we worked on was the idea of, uh, um, I would say uh, this was Other Space Odyssey, it was with Greg Lee, Michael Moltz and Alessandro Poli, it was part of Super Studio and um, he, did uh, with Super Studio a fascinating project. It was an idea of linking the, the earth and the moon within a highway. And uh, um, as in, um, so that you see this is part of the highway arriving to the moon and obviously as a Super Studio there were this amazing collage. Um, Polly uh, also worked on another project with uh, that other man you see there that is a farmer um, in, uh, in Tuscany and he had this, uh, um, there was this moment where actually I never, it was interesting because uh, w the truth and the fiction was actually not clear. Uh, many suspected actually this man doesn't even exist and was a poly idea that there was this farmer. But anyhow, for poly it becomes a kind of like um, a, an interesting, um, man because he is a person who was able to live in Tuscany in completely self-sufficient for his life. He never moved from there. And for him, 
um, at, there is this idea that actually is act exactly as Aldrin, Buzz Aldrin, the aeronaut. So there are two pe persons that explore a different kind of environment in, in, and, they're, and they are self-sufficient somehow. So for him, uh, he started to do these collages where actually Zeno and Aldrin, they meet. And uh, um, so what I asked uh, Alessandro Poli was actually to write something, to actually give voice to this, uh, to this collage and write what was actually the conversation between these two persons. Uh, so this is only a part of it. And uh, he really made them meet in uh, this place in Tuscany. And uh, so obviously it was a fictional uh, meeting. I have to say that the, all the editors at one point were very confused on the fact that actually if they really met or if uh, after this Zeno really met uh, Aldrin or went on the moon and so on. But it was an interesting exercise of um, linking something that was existing as a drawing, as a collage, and giving these, the words, kind of like the voice to, to, this, uh, to this collage. Um, this is another project that is an, is an exhibition that is uh, now <coughs> open at the CCA, and is uh, another exercise of uh, transforming an exhibition in, in a kind of like narrative um, way of exploring it, its content. It's an exhibition about Palladio, uh, curated by Guido Beltramini of the Centro Palladio, and it's called, it's sort of like an annotated exhibition. So, um, the idea is that the, the, um, there are uh, 15 uh, um, beautiful <laughs> Palladio drawings uh, exposed, but the interesting thing is that what we wanted to have was to have the curator with sort of like a, a, a role of a, a detective who um, el, uh, near each drawing starts to bring out lines and bring and make his annotation and is a way of reading each drawing as, uh, and following the, the curator minds of like relation between one drawing and another one and it's uh, very interesting because you could see the exhibition as single objects, but you could also read it through all this kind of like annotation and this narrative and entering in his, more in his thoughts. So the idea is to have this annotated exhibition where the exhibition is, is are the drawings, but in reality is the idea that is behind the drawing and is actually communicated with all this annotation. Um, the most recent project that uh, Marina was mentioning is this um, project that speaks about migration and uh, things that go went from one place to another one. And um, in the moment that uh, I decided to work on the migration, for me, it was important to um, set in which way we will speak about as being such a broad uh, topic, but also um, I didn't want to enter in this idea of um, uh, migration as, a, as a, um, a personal story and, and that feeling that, I don't know if you've ever been to a um, museum of um, migrants, there is always like a very specific sad story about someone who left that place and then the reason why he left and so on. So for me it was more, and maybe because also we are at CCA, the space for a center for architecture, was actually what happened uh, when when uh, when um, someone brought uh, an architectural typology or an idea of building or a way of cultivating the land or uh, from one place to another one so what what i I thought was important was to establish like two ways so in the in the exhibition is very uh, visual and the book is only um, words basically only stories uh, even if the idea of the story stays also in the <coughs> exhibition. Um, I thought that was important to give this idea of a book with many authors to give um, some rules. So we invented this uh, dogma, or sort of like a Lars von Trier dogma that we imposed to the authors um, of like how they will have to write to be part of this uh, book. 
Um, not everyone liked it. Many refused even to write. Um, for me, it was a way of trying to, um, to have a book that will be more con consistent, uh, even if with many different authors. Um, and um, there, were, there is a part that obviously becomes kind of like a part of fiction in the moment that the person decided to pick which is the protagonist of his story. But all the stories are actually based on <coughs> archival facts and real facts. So it was an interesting ex experiment about writing because um, it's, it's not anymore kind of like an academic writing, but is becoming a way of uh, telling all these stories, uh, and, uh, but within kind of like a different frame. Um, because we said um, that they couldn't even have images, um, so what I decided was to ask a person who does scientific illustration to actually take some of the characters and the protagonists of the stories and then um, have them present in the book. So the book is uh, full of these uh, um, illustrations. Again, it was an idea of making it very consistent and use also the ambiguity of the scientific illustration that actually it's not so scientific, but <laughs> use that kind of like medium to <coughs> illustrate. So the book is simply like this, and uh, some of our, each story has a sort of like, this is the protagonist of the story, and the work we did also, we, we worked to have these titles that will uh, bring more the idea of like more as a novel, more than an essay. Um, the exhibition is uh, working is working also as an idea of like story uh, in the, in uh, and each story has a different kind of like background. Um, and other things that that uh, regarding like words is um, as you know Montreal is a bilingual uh, place, and uh, uh, for me maybe not being French or English my mother tongue I always uh, struggle with this idea of one language and then we have to do translation, we always have to have both and so on. So I actually thought that being bilingual is actually a very good um, tool to actually uh, know more things. Uh, so the work I'm doing, and especially what's interesting for this show because it deals with the idea of migration, different cultures, is, uh, is to use the potentiality of the different language to don't translate exactly in the same way. So if a person reads both languages, actually gets more content. Um, and or maybe it was also because the title word so big for me was so stupid because to have configuration, configuration, and then you will have this kind of like stupid repetition of words. And so it's been an interesting exercise and I think it's interesting to see how this uh, use of the different languages actually could also implies a different way of, wor uh, of writing and different way of culturally explaining one, one subject in one language or in another one. Um, these are some of the, the, the galleries. Uh, the, the, the show has uh, many different objects and works with this big, it seems like um, pages uh, of a book inserted in the galleries and then the visitors see the images in this kind of like sequence or the sequence that it wants. And there is this, um, I don't know, relation between the images and the text that I, I would not say is like a, a stable book, but sometimes it's actually up to the person to connect the, if the images with the text. Um, I also want to show you one of the last things that I'm uh, actually uh, doing, sorry, is this, but um, <coughs> speaking of uh, referring to what uh, uh, again Jane was saying before, is uh, what we are trying to do is a new series. Sorry, uh, it's called uh, Afterward, and uh, um, is a way of reflecting on our work. It's sort of like a self-criticism, it will be a new series of small books. So it's called Afterward and we will want to actually analyze and kind of like criticize what we are doing in after that we did it. 
uh, Jane was referring of the, like, the different moment that uh, a person could write along the process. And so I think as an institution could be an interesting exercise to actually think about what we're doing. And so this is uh, uh, the, the work we are doing and trying to use the writing as a way of uh, conveying um, the character of the project. And I think is a, a, an instrument that uh, has a, you know, richness and could take any kind of forms. And uh, um, I think it's interesting to explore it also with an exhibition that uh, uh, could take this kind of like narrative form. Thanks. I think we'll move directly to the last uh, uh, contribution for the day, and then uh, we'll Sorry. <laughs> and then we'll have a, a brief uh, coffee break, uh, and then please uh, come all back. Then we can uh, have a discussion with all uh, the contributors of the day, and you can uh, ask your questions. Uh, the last uh, speaker is Hans Maja will uh, stay within the realm of editing and publications. Uh, and Hans uh, is a, a trained architect, but he's working mainly as an editor, curator, and also teacher. He, uh, Hans is based in uh, Zurich. He studied in uh, 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 Switzerland, in the Netherlands, and also at the Bartlett School. And in 2007, he founded the MAO, Architecture and Optimism. I don't know, perhaps you have to explain that in <laughs> London. And he's also uh, teaching at Westminster um, um, School of Architecture, a diploma unit. And most recently uh, has been uh, um, appointed as the curator of the exhibition ABC, Architecture, Biology and Chemistry, at the Swiss Architecture Museum in Basel. Please uh, welcome Hans.